My friend, uh, George Yu, Mr. Amitabh Kant, uh, Mr. Sankhe, Mr. Ram Walse, distinguished participants in today's program. Uh, I'm delighted to be here in Singapore and uh, coming to this vibrant city, uh, which demonstrates the synergies between our two countries and reflects the entrepreneurial and professional ability of the people of Singapore. Uh, Singapore is undoubtedly the right city to be hosting the World City Summit. Uh, Singapore is a city-state, uh, which uh, uh, makes things sometimes more easier, because the size of Singapore in terms of scale is very different to the scales we talk about in, uh, in India or in other Asian countries. But uh, as a leader in urban management, Singapore has demonstrated what smart, innovative, and sustainable cities can be. And today I'm here, I'm happy to be here sharing this stage with uh, Mr. George Yu, my good friend, not only my good friend, but a very good friend of India. Mr. George Yu, uh, I have known for, uh, I think it's 20 years, a long time when I was Minister of Environment, and I've seen him in different in incarnations as much as he has seen me in different uh, incarnations. Well, India emerged uh, from the global economic distress uh, uh, very well, and today we are seeing that the global economy is confronted with a new set of crises. The world has never seen the, a political crisis and economic crisis what we are seeing today. Political crisis in many parts of uh, the world and uh, economic crisis as never before where countries, the Western countries have to look at their structural, their structural parameters and uh, how they would uh, transform themselves to remain the engines of the global economy. So we are confronted with this huge situation today, I don't think ever in history, there has been a political crisis which we see in uh, areas of the Middle East, many, even uh, democracies, vibrant democracies going through turbulence, turbulence of sustainability, um, and uh, uh, a new economic paradigm, new architecture, uh, which will be needed for the future. Well, in India, we had uh, last year 6.9% growth, and uh, uh, all the macroeconomic indicators from yesterday in Singapore, I was asked that there's, you know, things are not going right in India. And I said that uh, India's become too used to a boom. So whenever there's not a boom, they think it's gloom. Uh, all the economic par parameters are very good. And a 6.8, 6.9, and we are targeting much more than that next year, uh, growth is much more than most countries in the world. So when the world looks at India, they also sometimes look at uh, a boom. And when they don't see this boom, they think it's gloom, they think there's something wrong. Uh, this is uh, a, percept a perception problem. And uh, across all sectors in India, across all sectors, you see the auto sector uh, growing at 25, 30%. Where in the world is it growing at 25-30%? Where is cement, steel, and other sectors growing so fast? If you look at the balance sheets of about 30 sectors which were looked at, uh, all of them making huge profits. But when you talk to any of them, they'll say they are very tough times because we are only having 25 or 30% growth. So they are tough times for India. Well, India's rapidly growing young population. India has about 435 million people in the age group of uh, 35, uh, 18 to 35. That makes India, India, uh, India's population more mobile. A young population is more mobile. And a more mobile population from rural India, a more mobile population from a rural India, a rural India where you see growing disposable incomes. Not incomes, but growing disposable incomes. People are more ready to move. The younger generation is more ready to move, looking for their aspirations and dreams uh, in urban India. That's why India's middle class 
uh, constitutes 50 million people is likely to witness a tenfold jump by 2025. Discretionary spending is also going up. Now, the government's policy of just not having growth, but managing growth. And what do I mean by managing growth? That means inclusive policies, where growth touches all parts uh, of the country, and growth touches all sections of society. This is meant a better life for people, and the theme of our 12th five-year plan covering the period 2012 to 2017 is faster, sustainable, and more inclusive growth. I don't believe growth can be sustainable if it is not inclusive. And if it is inclusive, we would want it to be faster. So faster, sustainable, and more inclusive, not inclusive, because we are already attempting inclusive growth. But more inclusive growth is what our target is. And the interplay of uh, demographics, reform, and globalization had, has played a crucial role in India's growth story. India's infrastructure sector remains a big challenge because growth has preceded infrastructure. And with growth preceding infrastructure, we have this huge infrastructure deficit. And we need to bridge this infrastructure deficit uh, uh, very urgently. It is estimated that the investment in infrastructure uh, will have to be in the next five years about $1 trillion. And that would make it about 10% of our GDP if we are to bridge this deficit. And when we bridge it, we will not be building for the future, but catching up with the past. So uh, our infrastructure deficit remains, along with urban infrastructure, uh, a huge challenge. Asia is in the midst of a decisive transition from a predominantly rural to an urban society and is urbanizing very rapidly. Between 2010 and 2050, urban population will almost double reaching 3.5 billion, that's in Asia. And during this period, these last four decades, more people have been added to urban areas than in all of history. In the thousand years, we've not seen such numbers as we've seen in the last 40 years. Where India is concerned, the urban population uh, has increased from 285 million in 2001 to 400 million in 2011, and in the next decade and a half, or maybe even a decade, is likely to go up to 600 million. Some say 600 million, some say 700 million, but it certainly won't be less than 600 million. And the number of our towns has increased. Our towns have increased from 5,161 in 2001 to close to 8,000 in 2011. This is uh, bigger than Europe. India has uh, about 55 cities with a population of uh, more than 1 million. And this is likely to be close to 70 cities uh, again in the next decade or decade and a half. It has, uh, today we have 13 cities with a population of more than 4 million. And this again is likely to go up. This is besides our six mega cities, which are more than 10 million and above. Again, this is bigger than the whole of Europe. Uh, our vision is to, is to facilitate creation of economically vibrant, inclusive, efficient, and sustainable urban habitats. Uh, it's been estimated that uh, just in urban infrastructure, we will require $1.2 trillion in the next 20 years. And about 60% of this will be in urban transport. We have launched, we had our urban renewal mission, and uh, we are looking at launching our second urban renewal mission in the next few months. Uh, we are hoping we'll find resources for 0.25% uh, of our GDP, which will mean uh, $38 billion to be spent over the next five years in supporting our state governments, in supporting our states. 
That means this will be in addition to what the states would have as their own outlay. Now, what are the important steps? I want to briefly dwell on the important steps which we need uh, to do in this. Uh, what is the interventions by government and what is the role the private sector can play? PPP has been a success in India in some sectors, but it is very nascent, very nascent in urban infrastructure. We've had successes in PPP, in, uh, uh, in the roads and highway sector, uh, in the port sector, but in urban infrastructure, PPP is still very, very young. And we are building on various uh, PPP models. We want to prepare a basket of PPP models uh, because there's no one size fits all. It's a mistaken notion that there's one size fits all PPP model. We've got to look at several PPP models, a basket of PPP models in water supply, solid waste management, uh, and whether it's even urban transportation, bus service, and even in upscaling and uh, uh, mainstreaming initiatives. Uh, in fact, we hope to take on the challenge under the 4P framework. Now, what is this 4P framework? People, private, public, and partnership. Uh, the world experience has shown that an urban renewal and management, the role of the people in design of projects and partnerships is crucial. Because nothing touches the people on a daily and an hourly basis as urban infrastructure. Roads and highways only when you traverse it. But where urban infrastructure is concerned, it touches your life on a daily and almost hourly basis. We've got to look at strengthening of urban governance. India is a large democracy. We have uh, uh, democracy going down to our village levels, to our municipal levels. How do we synthesize and how do we harmonize the role of politically appointed representatives uh, with uh, the managing of our municipalities? Um, how do we make uh, local self-government uh, work together with experts, with the bureaucracy, uh, and with officials in this? Uh, this is, again, a very big challenge and needs to be addressed. But I think the most important area uh, where in India uh, urban infrastructure is concerned, urban challenges are concerned, is in capacity building. Uh, the lack of capacity in this, the lack of capacity in formulating projects, in strategic planning, uh, in delivery, just is not there. And with the number of towns and municipalities we have, small municipalities, medium-sized municipalities, large municipalities known as municipal corporations, the capacity is not there. The soft infrastructure is not there. We cannot have the hard infrastructure uh, without the soft infrastructure. Hard infrastructure cannot precede soft infrastructure. And I think this is going to be one of our biggest problems because if we want to shift the focus of uh, of uh, infrastructure projects from asset creation to service delivery, then without a soft infrastructure, without capacity building, it's not going to happen. The government, the government of India has uh, adopted service level benchmarks um, for the urban water and sanitation sector. Uh, the support which the central government will give to the state government is going to be based on certain reforms is going to be based on service level benchmarks. And it is these service level benchmarks which will entitle the states to avail of assistance from the center. This is to catalyze the process of this uh, transformation. Another very important aspect, which is covered as one in our 12th five-year plan document, is the efficient use of land resources and land monetization. India uses urban land very inefficiently uh, because it does not permit sufficient substitution of capital for land in line with international practices. 
this is because of the very low FAR and FSI which is permitted. Uh, so how do we have strategic management of land assets? This is uh, very important because by strategic management of land assets and by monetization of land, we can look at suburbanization. We can look at twin cities. In India, suburbanization uh, is sometimes taking place by default, not by design. We have to make sure that suburbanization is by design and not by default. This is very important because how do we have dispersal? Dispersal of our cities and of our urban areas. As much as we got to look at dispersal of economic activity, economic activity is the magnet which attracts people to urban areas. And we've estimated that today we have 60% of our new jobs, new jobs being created um, in urban areas. In the next 10 years, 70% of our new jobs will be created in our urban areas. With 70% of our new jobs being created in urban areas, almost 70% of our GDP will be generated in um, our urban areas. Then there's the question of our urban transport sector. We've achieved some success in this. We have, uh, or we are building metros uh, in Delhi, Kolkata, Mumbai, Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, and Jaipur. And two of them are on a PPP mode. But uh, uh, this also needs to be accelerated. We are going to be having 440 kilometers of metro in Delhi, which is going to be, as I said yesterday, going to be larger than the London Underground. We are on phase three and we finish phase four. That's the, 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 the scale at which, at which it shall be. We've also decided that we must plan for metros in all cities above a two million population. A two million population we are starting, which the government of India will support, um, starting uh, preparations of DPR. In conclusion, let me state that uh, uh, urbanization is the next new opportunity and open up a whole new horizon for overseas players in the urban development space. Singapore is a smart city that offers a secure urban uh, environment to its residents and they can be a critical partner both on the financial side uh, and on the infrastructure side with India. Thank you very much.